We'd like to sincerely thank our Patreon supporters. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. We had a little cold snap last night. My shop looks like a bomb went off. I've got shelves that we put into the middle room moved out here because Kagan is moving her snakes in there. So she's getting that set up. Um, as things are coming to a close at the other property, I just moved my surf skis over to the house. So I've got to hang two racks in the shop today to uh, lift these two guys up to the ceiling. I had uh, a race yesterday. Uh, sometimes there's one in the middle of the week. Um, Kagan got to go and watch. And uh, she's over here watering some of the plants that she brought over. Um, all ornamental stuff. Well, there's one vegetable plant, right? Yeah. Some some sort of squash. Some sort of squash or pumpkin or something that popped up in a in a bed. So all these trays of plants, uh, they're a little shocked by the Florida heat. Although, like I said, it was cold last night. Well, we do have some figs, a lemon. You said mm -hmm. it's a variegated pink lemon. Pink lemon. Um, and what else is in there? I know you said a bunch of figs, which I can see. Oh, and peaches. No peaches, just ah. figs. No, no peaches? No peaches. Ah, maybe I wanted peaches. <laughs> <laughs> but today's video, even though I think we're gonna have a future video on the snakes and setting up the middle room for the snakes, and that'll be a progression because right now they're going into racks and tubs, but you want more of the snakes to end up in four foot and six foot enclosures yeah so. what we feel are like better quality yeah. of life enclosures yeah awesome so we're going to try and do that but right now we have the rabbits the chickens and the turkeys like we discussed and so when she's done watering this we're going to walk out there and find out what the next little steps are to make them comfortable where they are and then talk about the plans for them in the future. All right, so we're in front of what Adam had given me for what the quail cages were in originally, if you guys remember. And now it's turned into our feed station. We have all of our locking feed buckets. And now we don't just have the one or two for the, the quail, but we have food for the rabbits, the turkeys, the chickens. And uh, we could probably build a shelf in here and house all of our food, maybe even screen it from one side, mm -hmm. make it totally rodent proof, maybe even put a stinking door across the front of it, seal it up all the way. It would keep rain out. Um, it'll do a good job. Actually, I like the idea of screening it and putting doors on it. And if then it was waterproof, that means we could store the dry bags in here too before we even open them on the shelving drive bags. That would be brilliant. And you know what else would be nice? Making it like a foot taller because I'm gonna slice my forehead in half on this metal. So that's a possibility also. I think I can raise the roof just a little bit and then maybe put a plywood, pressure treated plywood back and seal it. Um, so now we're walking over to the enclosure the quail are doing good. They're starting to lay. They're transitioning to the, uh, the higher protein feed. I found out my mom was actually mixing the low and the high. So we're, we're getting eggs, but not eggs from all the females. Um, one of the next couple of weeks, Kagan is gonna set aside some eggs and we're gonna hatch out some replacements and build back up our group. But here we are walking in. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Yeah, the eggs are kind of wherever. Um, so we've noticed right away, of course, they're doing a really good job on working all the ants and everything out of the enclosure. They'll probably do a great job of controlling all the grass in here, so I won't have to weed whack or cut this anymore. Um, yeah, I see an egg underneath that cage right there. Um, Obviously, nothing is going to stay the way you see it for very long. So we don't have the screen on the roof yet. So that's something we're going to race through. Um, on the camera, we haven't seen any raccoons or possums or anything. 
um, patrolling around. So, so far so good, but that doesn't mean that tomorrow, the next day, we won't have a problem. So what are you feeding them today? They it, get a mixture of black oil, sunflower seeds, uh, scratch grains, and egg laying pellets. Okay. And uh, the rooster is... Uh, He's yeah. in a Yom Samani. So he has black meat, feathers, organs. <laughs> He's all black. And there are a couple of hens mixed in that are 50% a Yom, um, but they're not pure like he is. So what color is their meat? It's black as well. It's black as well. If I opened um, their mouth and showed you their tongue, like their tongue would be black. It's pretty cool. Has anyone tried one of those before? What does the black meat taste like? Like regular meat. Just like regular meat? Yep, I've tried one before. Oh, well, there you go. There's your answer. <laughs> Don't comment and tell me what it tastes like. We already know. Um, so how heavy is this, the bigger turkey back there right now? Uh, so she's probably around 25, 26 pounds. Um, and uh, she is going to be our housewarming party? Yes. Yes? Yes. That's our housewarming party. We're going to have a housewarming party <laughs> at some point, and, and she's going to be our dinner. And uh, and this other girl? Yes. We're going to raise up for Thanksgiving. Is that too long to hold on to a bird? She's already got a little bit of age on her. Um, we can always get more, and they'd be ready by... Small. Okay, so maybe we need to have two turkey dinners. <laughs> I love turkey. Um, my mom makes the most amazing turkey gumbo, so that's not a problem. So one of the things that we've noticed is that the turkeys and chickens are panting. Mm -hmm. Not today, the air is a bit cooler, but in the full sun, they were getting a little toasty. Getting a little toasty, and they've been hiding as much as they can underneath the cages. You'll see them try and tuck up against the wall. Like, I'm sure they're scratching there, but they're also kind of like laying in the dirt where there is that shade. Um, so I have a big shade sail that I took from the other house um, that we're gonna stretch over there and give them some immediate relief. And we'll have to move it back out of the way when we get to the roof screen, but um, we'll get into that and give them some some relief. But then also some roosts were gonna hang in there today, right? Yep. So, excuse me. So what are we gonna do? Hang some like two by fours in the corner. Now you've clipped or trimmed the, the hen's wings. Will they be able to get to something about four and a half foot high? Oh yeah, they could still jump about this. It would just prevent them from going really any higher than about six foot. Or do you think it's better to put the roost just off the ground right there? Either one would work. I would say that they're more used to about this height. Okay. Resting. All right. So that's easy. We'll just screw some two by fours onto there in the corners. There's so, the difference between a bantam egg and an egg layer egg. Okay. <laughs> and which ones are laying the, the blue green eggs? Those, that would be one of these three brown Okay. I used to have Easter eggers. Those are the ones that laid the blue green eggs for me at the other house. Oh, there's there's a nice solid green egg. Kind of about, <laughs> almost like an olive green, that one. Mm -hmm. And what's the story on the rabbits? What type of rabbits do we have here? So most of them are California giants. Um, they're a really great option for meat rabbits because they have a lot of meat to bone ratio. Um, I also really love the look of them. I've always liked that solid white coat and the darker tips and points on their feet, ears, and nose. Okay. And we have one or two New Zealands as well. I had just started to branch out a little bit. That's a pretty rabbit there. And get into some other breeds just to kind of experiment and see how productive they are in comparison to the California Giants. Well, explain to the viewers <laughs> why were you breeding rabbits before? Oh, sure. So in Georgia, I owned reticulated pythons and a really good food source for reticulated pythons is rabbits. 
Um, a lot of my snakes were larger and could eat those larger prey items. Um, but I also just enjoyed breeding meat rabbits for a food source for myself as well because I had the whole farm and garden homestead. I enjoy producing my own vegetables and then having that meat option was really great too. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to continue that here at the property. Now, what you didn't say is to move here, Kagan had to get rid <laughs> of all of her reticulated pythons. That is right. So she, you either transformed or transferred your breeding projects to other people mm -hmm. for percentages, like as clutches hatched out. And I'm sure it tethered off until yep. they, the snakes ended up being theirs. Um, or you, you sold snakes. Yep. So and I that would was say sad, right? It was very sad. It's very sad. It was rough because, you know, that's that was my favorite species to work with. They're really incredible animals. I mean, crazy inquisitive, just just really intelligent creatures. But, uh, you know, some some things are worth giving up. So a future video idea, we're road tripping it in like a month or so mm -hmm. with Tyler and Lawson. Maybe we can visit somebody who's who has some of Kagan's snakes. That would be cool. And possibly revisit some of her snakes and let her teach us, teach me a little bit. I mean, I've had retics before, but what locality? I have no idea. They were just retics back then. Mm -hmm. And now they have all these morphs and dwarfs and all this stuff. Uh, I don't even know what she's talking about once she gets into it. It's <laughs> so much more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, I think their personalities have changed a lot too from when they were originally imported to when the captive breeding programs have really helped calm down their, uh, their tendencies. No, yeah, I was just, while she was talking, you know me, I'm always looking at details. The chickens have, this was full yesterday, yeah. so they've drank three gallons of water in a day. Mm -hmm. um, so when we set them up at their permanent location, we are going to use that irrigation system to overflow. I don't know if we're using tubs necessarily, but whether it's just a, the chicken buckets with the little nipples hanging down, um, we're gonna figure it out where it stays fresh, clean, and is replenishing itself daily. So that's obviously weekly cleaning of stuff, but not daily watering and we'll have to figure it out where it drips into all the rabbit feeders like we'll set it up in a very smart way so obviously there's checking on animals every day but it doesn't become such a massive chore that you lose interest or exhaust yourself or can't go on a vacation we want this to be working working smart and uh something that we could still enjoy a good life mm -hmm. while doing Awesome. All right, so let's get started on some lumber for some roosts and we'll start putting that in here and then we'll lay out that shade sail and see how that's gonna fit. Once we get those couple things done in here, then we're gonna kind of walk and look at our ideas. Maybe we'll lay out the area where we think um, these cages should be and discuss the sizes that they're gonna be. All right, so now we're in the backyard and we just put a little squirt of the white right there on the ground and we're going to just get a rough layout for what we think the tortoises are going to use mm -hmm. like how, how much space are two aldabras going to use as much as you give them because initially <laughs> we're just going to babysit my mom's tortoises but down the line we may get our own yeah we may get different tortoises or we may babysit her tortoises. Mm -hmm. We can always add more later. Mm -hmm. But I think initially we know that we want to have one tortoise pin right over here. Plus this is a weird shape because what we're building for all your stuff is going to follow this fence line, right? So let's just figure a rough distance. We have that white on the ground. Let's go to right here. How does that look? That looks like about 30 feet, but we can go out into the yard as far as we want, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't ground marking spray paint, so it doesn't <laughs> like spraying that way. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna mark, say, we're gonna follow straight down this hedge. We're gonna trim this hedge back 
we'll probably build our cages like two feet off of it. Mm -hmm. That means they're going 12 feet straight out into the yard. Um, so every four feet, we can mark for our quail enclosure. So. This is just rough. We're just. And the plan is to have them all next to each other so that they can share a wall and it's use less materials. Okay. Absolutely. So, all right, so that's already one, two, three. Four. Five. So that's five. Are we going to have four in a grow out? Is that going to be enough? So each one, I think we can have 20 females and two males. Mm -hmm. I think someone told me. So 22 quail, they're 12 foot deep. So it's quite a nice sized enclosure. Um, and the height doesn't matter. The height is just going to be for us to be able to walk in. Right. So we don't need more than that, right? Probably not. I think that's plenty. Well, the quail aren't going to be our only food source either for the lizards. Uh, we're also going to have the rabbits. We're going to have chickens. So, so do we do a grow out for chickens? Like a six by 12? How big of a grow out do we need for young chickens? Well, the other question is, do we need an enclosure for meat birds too? Meat birds, we're going to do the rolling pin. I'm not calling it a tractor. I didn't call it, it that. It doesn't have a motor. I know you didn't want to. We're going to call it a chicken <laughs> cart. I, I refuse to call it a chicken tractor because it doesn't have a motor. It's not going to do it. Most people know those movable chicken coops as chicken tractors, but Jerry really doesn't like that name. <laughs> so we're not calling it a chicken tractor. So I say we go another six feet. Do we start over? Where are we at? I did something. Let me, let me reset this guy. Okay, so we're going to do six feet. And how far forward do they go? 12 feet. So that's deep. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of depth there. Um, and they're going to get a lot of shade from these trees. Mm -hmm. It's really going to be massively helpful for them. It's cool here. And we're gonna let, so so that's a grow out for the chickens. Yes. Now we're gonna do a 20 foot enclosure. 12 by 20. So we're looking for 26 feet. Okay, now I'm gonna reset this sucker to zero because or I could just use my feet. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're saying roughly two feet off that hedge. We're gonna trim the hedge better. So let's just say right here. So this is the depth all the way, I don't know what I said right about there so that's the depth by 20 feet and we can have it'll be set up like I had at the other house I'm sure a lot of viewers don't remember how I had it set up but I'll have all the laying boxes the nesting boxes laying boxes mm -hmm. lay boxes lay boxes across the front and I had like a little wooden step grandstand that I created where you just walk up and you can access them um, and we're gonna we have the electronic door also to let that'll uh, automatically yeah. open and let them go. So now, turkeys, right? Turkeys. Oh man, we got projects. <laughs> Lots of projects, Pete. <laughs> How much room do turkeys need? How many turkeys do you want? <laughs> I'm thinking just two, right? Two? As long as we have two, we're good. Their names but are Thanksgiving and Christmas? Yeah. Well, I mean, you have different <laughs> names for the other two, but 
what do you do if you, well, you won't start raising them until the middle of the year. So this could sit, potentially sit empty for quite a while. So the other thing about turkeys that we haven't discussed yet is that when you get turkeys, you don't just buy the number that you intend to raise, grow out and eat. You kind of want to overbuy because oh. they're typically kind of problematic birds. They end up having random leg issues like the, uh, the tendons in their legs will just slip. And sometimes you can fix it and sometimes you can't. And uh, there's been a couple of times where I've bought, I think when I got that first group of broad breasted whites, I had started with five or six birds and lost two of them to the tendon slipping when they were three, four months old. And I, I wouldn't mind that. periodically eating younger turkeys throughout the year. Yeah. Yeah. And you love boiled turkey. You quit that. <laughs> <laughs> she eats really healthy and she does what, meal prep you do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what, you were eating turkey and garbanzo beans just, or turkey and green beans. Baked and turkey and white rice. Baked I, ground turkey. I would lose my mind. <laughs> I don't have to do that, right? No, you don't. Okay. So, <laughs> how many feet for grown two grown birds or six young ones growing out? 12 by 12? Again, we're going to let them walk during the day, right? Yeah. I think 12 is a pretty big area. If it's just for evening time and sleeping, they could probably get away with, if it's going to be... I don't like to get away with. I would if I'm gonna build it. <laughs> what's fair? What's good for the animal? You could do six to eight foot by twelve foot. So twelve by twelve? Yeah, I could do twelve. Okay. You can make a big cage. You can always cross fence it or something if you wanna separate two birds. Mm-hmm. This is not exact. The wheel, the wheel is for just rough estimating. So it's not using a lot of our property. We're going to still have all that room to build more, right? Because mm -hmm. um, what if we decide, oh, we didn't do the rabbits. We didn't do the rabbits. Ooh. Let me reset that. Do the rabbits need to be closer or further? Did we just mess all that up? No, they can be on the, on the end. How much space did those rabbits have before? Um, so I had them essentially in a 10 by 10. You can turn the camera on you. They might rather- I keep forgetting. Yeah, they might <laughs> rather prefer you over me, so. Um, so I had the rabbits in a 10 by 15 area before in a fenced in kennel, but I also had them set up to where their cages were tiered and stacked on each other with trays in between. Um, so depending on how we want to set them up, if we want to do something similar to where they're going to have trays underneath them, then we could do the 10 by 15 or we could give me, I, all I was really using was 10 by 10. The extra five foot was just extra space. Um, so another 12 by 12 or a 12 by 16. Even numbers are good. 12 by 12 is easy. That's that's four by fours or two by fours that I don't even trim. So are we gonna try and stack them? I would prefer to give them just individual cages sure. to where Why not? their droppings collect on the ground and I can come and scoop them up really easily. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, so if we keep with the same size cages that they're in right now, they're in 36 inch by 36 inch cages. Um, so so three deep would give you a walkway. Mm -hmm. So we could would do give you three feet for you to walk around. Obviously on the end, you could have four cages, mm -hmm. but on the middle you would have three so you can walk around. Yeah. If we, yeah. And you'd want at least a three foot walkway. Mm -hmm. So here we go. One, two, three. That's one cage against the wall. And then 
six is the walkway. Mm -hmm. Nine is another row of cages. We're almost at nine. Uh, I can't tell. Yeah, we were at nine. Pete. Twelve is another walkway. Hi, Pete. <laughs> So we need to do 16. 12 by 16 would give you nine plus six, 15. So it gives you three rows and two walkways. Mm -hmm. That'll do it. That's so that's good. four, eight, and you guys enjoying my math? <laughs> four, 14 cages. Is that enough or no? So we've got 13 rabbits right now. I think the number of breeders that we have at the moment is a pretty good number. But if we want to have space for the grow outs. Can grow outs be stacked? The grow outs can be stacked. They can also just be in longer cages. Like they don't, you know, one rabbit in a 36 by 36 adult breeder can house the smaller babies in it. That's 20. So do a 12 by 20. Cool. That's a lot of rabbits. Well, that's a lot of cages. <laughs> I mean, it looks, it looks like we're building that all over again, but it kind of does. It's not coated. I don't have to strip over the wire. Um, it's, I mean, I may on the front for it to look just better, mm -hmm. but we don't have all the worries of that. Um, I know how to build the cages so predators can't dig in. So we'll do that. So mm -hmm. we'll, and we don't have to pour the concrete walls. This will happen a lot, a lot yeah, quicker. Way faster. A lot quicker. Um, and so you I, have a helper. <laughs> and I have a helper now. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think to, to prep this area, we're going to start not today in this video, but when we're ready to start setting some posts, we will trim this hedge mm -hmm. nice and straight. We'll pop a line for our fence. We might even set a couple fence posts just to have them in the ground and, and then start where we want and pop a line on the back. Once we have the back, then once we square out the first, I say we come down the line with the string and we'll set this big chicken coop the 12 by 20 square diagonally and everything and then we'll build off of that mm -hmm. and then everything will stay square so that's what we'll do feels good to have a plan it does feel good to have now a plan. we need to get to work setting up the animals now we need to hang some shade cloth shade cloth and a place for the chickens to roost yes all right so we have the shade sail that we have. It's the one we have. We didn't buy it or anything. I think I've had this thing in storage for about 10 years. So um, that will give us some instant shade for about that much of the enclosure. Um, and then you said we may have to stack rabbits after that to get them into the relief. Mm -hmm. And then we have, and not just the rabbits because all the birds can then now hang out on this side for their shade relief. Mm -hmm. So then, we're just gonna screw these two by twos on real quick. And now the chickens and everything are gonna have a place to just get off the ground at night. Not all of them, but we already know that a lot of them are sitting on top of the rat, the rabbit hutches, right? Yep. So. Some of them are already, have already figured it out for themselves. Oh, they love that noise, don't they? Oh, yeah. Well, we got some talkers. <laughs> I could turn it off hammer drill. Is that a little better? <laughs> You Bubba watching? <laughs> hey Bubba. 
What's up, dude? Yeah, they're much more used to having bars like this to roost on at night. So this will give them a good option for a place to sleep. And away from the ants. Not that I have seen an ant in here since we've introduced them. Now how long until you think we can let them wander around the property a little bit? I would give them you know, a week or two to kind of settle in. The one I'm concerned, there's, there's a couple I'm more concerned about with going a little wild. That's that one chicken that showed up at my old property. Legs, legs, yep, right? her name is Legs. She's, uh, I don't know if she belonged to somebody before or if she was i don't know i don't know where she came from she just showed up randomly at my own old homestead and i call her legs because she's got really long legs and she's really leggy but she's a little bit more a little bit more crazy than the others all right there you go boom <laughs> she's like i'm just gonna take a dirt bath over here <laughs> So now we need to get some other screws and some big fender washers to try and attach this. Yes. Um, this is very temporary because this thing's going to go crazy in a windstorm. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be happy. But uh, I think we need to go get that hardware and some ladders and then we'll be able to put this up. All right, so we've got the shade sail up over the rabbits and it's immediate relief on this area. Jerry just finished attaching this one corner. I don't feel any relief from up here. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but that already looks a lot better for these guys down here, don't you think? Absolutely. But now what we're discussing is why is my phone ringing? Um, <laughs> what are we going to do in their permanent enclosures to keep the rain out so their food doesn't get wet? But we want light. Like, do we do screen and then a corrugated sun panel that lets filtered light through? So we still have light during the day, but it's shade, but it, it's keeping the water off. Do we just do the corrugated panel with like the wood inserts? I mean, I hate to leave a way that a rodent can find its way in. Mm -hmm. And I know the ends of those panels, they can come in. Mm -hmm. And if it's wood, they chew their way in. Um, and I don't know that those panels last forever, really. And really to be waterproof, then you have to pitch your roofs. Then, you, then everything has to have an angle. Right, yeah. Well, I wasn't thinking those, the paneling on top of the entire thing. I was thinking it just on top of each individual enclosure, like it, like their own roofs. Yeah. Because my chickens before, I only did it for like half where their food and water stayed dry. Mm -hmm. I let the enclosure get water in it. Otherwise, it's just a big dust bowl. Yeah. The water is good for the ground. Yeah. So that might be the plan then to give them each individual roofs and then the entire thing gets the screen over it and the wire. That way it's like the sun screen to where rain can still come through and water can still hit the ground. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guess we figured that out. <laughs> All right, well, we're sitting on the dock. It's the end of the day. We've been trying to organize everything in the shop we, basically, we pretty much had boxes stacked to the ceiling in there mm -hmm. and we had to move shelving around and stuff to fit our snakes in there. So we've been working like crazy. I'm exhausted. You're exhausted. But, uh, you know, you think having another person with common interests on the property that you're going to, <laughs> <laughs> that it's going to be easier. But really, like, we have very similar interests, but some of them are in different, you know, 
monitors snakes mm -hmm. you know we just took on well i just took on and you you've had all these chickens rabbits everything so now mm -hmm. this is a whole slew of new enclosures mm -hmm. on top of the slew of enclosures that mm -hmm. i already had to build it's uh we have a lot to do but you know what you guys hear me say that every week there's always lots to do <laughs> so you know now there's two of us we'll get through it and i'm excited I know Kagan's excited. Yes. I think you're excited. I'm a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. And uh, <laughs> this is going to be a good thing. Mm. And um, we wanted to talk with you guys about, you know, the idea of, you know, we want to do a secondary channel, mm -hmm. like myself be the primary on the channel, Wolf's World, the channel that we've started. Um, but then Kagan being a secondary and then, you know, if I'm busy, she can pick up the camera and film a video and you guys can enjoy a Kagan video if that's okay with you guys. <laughs> I'm assuming it's going to be. Um, and, but we want to do this other channel for the vegetable gardens, the greenhouse, um, the fruit trees on the property. Um, some content may overlap and, and not just plants, but also the, the animals. Uh, the eggs, the the chickens, the the rabbits, anything that could be uh, food for somebody to sustain themselves, and and a smarter way to be less reliant reliant on grain and stuff like that. Trying to be me wanting to be more self reliant for for food for the monitors, but also, you know. I'm not a full on prepper or anything like that. I don't have canned goods stacked to the ceiling anywhere, but I, it, it's nice, especially as expensive as things are getting mm -hmm. to not rely so heavily on. So like letting the chickens range more so you're not buying as much in feed. Obviously we have to buy feed. Um, That'll but, help cut down on the bugs in the yard too. Yeah, the, the tick problem. So. We, we could start attacking these problems from two different sides. So what we're thinking is start in the next couple weeks, start adding a Friday video mm -hmm. that will be Kagan content. And that will, so we're still gonna have our regular Wolf's World content on Sundays and Wednesdays. And at a certain point, we're gonna start adding, um, I think Tom's gonna call it like bonus video or something like that. So it's, different than the regular content. Just kind of like we've done the surf ski stuff. Tom's called it bonus video. So you can tune in, don't tune in, whatever. I, I'm hoping you guys will tune in um, because our goal will be to start this second channel mm -hmm. with Kagan as the primary and then obviously me as the, uh, you know, the person she's cracking the whip at <laughs> and making me build stuff or carry stuff for her. So uh, um, it should be fun. And on, uh, on top of all those enclosures that need to be built, you've got something big to do this weekend too. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, on top of everything else is the final move, um, I believe. I, I, there's going to be some stuff after this weekend, but the final move of like furniture and stuff from the old property, which means that this house will finally be set up and actually be a home, um, which which is exciting, but it's a lot of work on top of the other work and I'm still filming the surf ski video so I still have to drop everything and do some fiberglass work every day mm -hmm. and uh, I am under the gun now like I literally can't skip a day or I'm not gonna meet my deadline so um, it's gonna be crazy for the next week but um, I like crazy I like crazy too <laughs> <laughs> alright guys I, I hope you're enjoying the content and uh, we appreciate you. Until next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. See you soon.